All right, here we go. Get ready to have a good time. This is exciting, isn't it? Welcome aboard the Dreamliner. It's the only way to fly. <laughs> Look at me. Uh-huh. Podcaster. Look at me. Uh-huh. Podcaster. I'm the captain now. Podcaster. Gary, Gary, Gary. Here's a young speaker who is really in demand. Don't let that go to your head, Gary. <laughs> Wait, there's more. That's what I'm talking about. He is Gary Meyer. It's the Friday, March 18th, 2022 edition of the Gary Meyer Show, Cocktail Hour Live. Cocktails, woo, drinks. Yes, indeed. Our live show starts on Fridays at 6 p.m. Eastern, 5 Central, 4 Mountain, 3 Pacific, and so forth. Gary podcasts five days a week. All shows are available on GaryMeyer.com, where you can sign up for the longer Tuesday and Thursday premium podcasts, buy merchandise, read Gary's blog, and even find this and all of our live cocktail hour shows. We know that some of the Gare Force can't stream along live with us and either watch a replay on our preferred streaming channel, the Gare Force Live YouTube channel, or Gary's Facebook page, or on Twitch. And some folks only listen to the audio podcast version of the live show. Folks that don't join us live miss out on the giveaways we do only when we're live. The computer will pick whoever wins. And yes, Leslie says there will be one today. But before we get to that, we're trying something new for all members of the Gear Force this week that are at least 18 years old and have both a valid email address and a U.S. mail address. Straight from the invited media event I attended for the St. Patrick's Week Mighty Festival over at Raglan Road Irish Pub at Disney Springs Walt Disney World Resort, I'm giving away this bottle and can opener key ring, plus a Gear Force magnet to one lucky viewer. For your chance, go to the website bit.ly slash gm31822. That's all lowercase bit.ly slash gm31822. GM31822. Then you submit the form with complete and correct answers to the questions marked required. The complete rules are on that web page. The correct answer to the final required question on the form will be provided during today's show, so stay tuned. Yes, we'd appreciate answers to all of the questions on the form, but you don't have to do that to enter. Get the required questions answered correctly by 11.59 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Thursday, March 24th, 2022, and we'll pick a winner from the valid entries on next Friday's show. Now, whether you watch live or later, be sure to like and share the show on all of your favorite social media channels. Subscribe to the Gear Force Live YouTube channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when we're live. These things help the show, and if you've done that already, thanks. Comments are always welcome, too. And when we're live and you comment on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitch... We may show it on the screen, and Gary may acknowledge it. Of course, no matter where you are, it's time for a digital mimosa. Now, fasten your seatbelts, it's time to go wheels up on the Gear Force Live! Hey, thank you, Alan. Appreciate it. Hey, uh, I don't. Maybe I had a couple. Yeah, I'm drinking wine tonight. I'm not in my usual place. I'm on location. I've got some business going in New York City, and I'm in New York City, and I've had a few sips. But that seemed like a lot of instruction to get something, and it's just me because I I couldn't follow it. But that's not the point because I can't win anyway. But I hope it was okay with everybody that was watching because. I don't know what you got to fill out, but I'm sure it's worth it, right, Alan? Everything's yes, good? indeed. We've got we've got um, another Gear Force magnet. Let me turn on my camera here. We got another Gear Force magnet. I got this nifty can opener, <laughs> bottle opener for St. Patrick's Day, which the folks at Raglan gave me at an event the other day, and I think it's perfect for the Gear Force. Okay. The, the form the form is very easy. I put a link to it in the comments. But the reason there's so much description is we have audio podcast listeners, and I've said a few weeks in a row that we wanted to give folks who don't watch the live stream a chance to win something. So all of the information they need to know is in the audio and by the end of the show we'll give the answer to the last question because we want people to wait till the end of the show to have a chance to win all right all you got to do is put your social security number on you know that 
the usual. Hey, all let's we need is an all we need is an address and an email, and that's okay. it. Okay. <laughs> uh, hey, let's kick the tires. Let's light the fires. Let's go wheels up on this. There they are. There are the tires. Let's light them up, and we're up on the Gear Force Cocktail Show. Thank you for stopping by. A lot of people have checked in already, and I wrote some names down. Then I'm going to go to the screen door. Lloydster, and he said his Blarney Stones need a kiss or adjusting or something. Uh, no, they're ready to be kissed. Okay. Okay, Lloydster. Martin from British Columbia. Every week he's checking in. And you got uh, Anthony, David from Oaklawn, Illinois. Amy, she was the winner last week, and she said, because Leslie sends the wine condom and whatever else comes out of her now, it's not a fun bag. It's a bag. Uh, we'll find out in a minute. But anyway, she said that Leslie has beautiful handwriting. Dale, Marianne, Larry from Midlothian, Illinois, Kim, Scott, Russell, Barbara from Michigan City, Indiana. Now I'm going to the screen door. Wait, and... Before you go to the screen door, Gary, let's put up uh, Keely Ann's comments since we didn't do that. That's yet. right. She's first every week. Not only does Erin go braless and like Irish handcuffs, she shows off her schnauzer, too. Keely Ann, setting the pace car, as she always does. Thank you, K.A. That is a beautiful sentiment for St. Patrick's Week. And now the screen door. Doug, Stephen, Chris, Donald, Christina, checking in. All right, there's the screen door. I'll tell you what, the weather in New York City is so beautiful that people are out in droves. And a lot of masks still in the Big Apple, but you can tell that people are just ready to be out and get some fresh air. And the, the vibe is very pleasant. And sometimes when you come into New York City or live in New York City, you know what I'm talking about. It can be a little tense, but I think people are just ready to say, hey, what the fuck? We went through two years of hell. Let's enjoy. And that's the vibe I'm feeling right now. Uh, Leslie, let me tell you who our guest is, as if you don't know, because we we're just talking to you. <laughs> well, honestly, based on this morning's um, pre-show, I didn't know who he was because we effed up his name a little bit. On the okay. Show. What did I, because I, I know uh, Ellen said in the opening there that I, I, I hadn't done it yet. Where was he getting the mispronunciation? Um, Thursday's we, premium show. Really? Oh, was it what did I oh, say? I thought it was this morning's. Okay. What did I say? We called him Vanden Hooven, Vandal Hooven or something. <laughs> I think I we're just having fun because it's an interesting name and it's very show busy. It is. We're... It's fun to yeah. say. It's... Um, hey, for all of you talking about my handwriting, I just want to say thank you. Look at that. That's what you're going to get. A nice little note when you win the condom and what's ever in her fun bag of fun stash bag. What <laughs> it is, is it? It's the Gear Force Grab Bag of Fun. And here it is, you, right here. You are going to reach in I and will. pull something out of that bag, and that goes with the condom. There's the condom. There's oh, the why bag. don't you release the condom first to get this oh. thing really started? Because I'm sure and you got that, look at that. We do have nice a tip. lot of pressure built up. Nice so, tip. Okay, here we go. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. There it goes. A nice yeah. sideways oh. shot. We almost had a yeah a misfire, okay. but got it. Yeah, I'm on the red wine tonight. So you're on yeah, the white. So you're going to end up with your Kool-Aid lip uh, mm -hmm. marks. That's yeah, the only reason Manchu. I drink whites on the show, because I did notice when I drink uh, the reds, yeah, I would yeah, end up you get with a, foo. The, uh, a milk mustache -y yeah. or a wine mustache. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to reach in the bag I and will. tell us. Oh, you will do that later. I think so. Like, okay. like Alan, let's let's keep you guys guessing for a while. Oh, ah, okay. Well, you spent a little time with our guest a little while ago, and he has quite a career. Holy Starts smokes. in Grand Rapids, ends up in Los Angeles, and he's got all kinds of things going. Now, how many people can say they gave Emma Stone a cup of coffee complimentary? How many? Right there. Nope. This guy can. Yep. Tiff can say that because that's what he did in the movie La La Land. If you've seen the movie, there's a scene where Emma Stone's character walks into this coffee shop on the studio lot. And Kiff, as whatever, I don't even know if he has a name in the, the movie. He sees it's Emma Stone and she's a big star and just says, as he hands her the coffee, it's on us. Kiff is like those actors that we just seem to gravitate toward, like J.K. Simmons. Um, 
the ones who are working all the time and they right. really do seem like the backbone of Hollywood and yes. he well he does voice acting and well we'll get into all that in a little bit he's even talked to young rock now that, yes he has because he's be on that new NBC show young rock based on the life story of Dwayne the Rock Johnson there he <laughs> is in, in that and let's bring Kiff on and here's how I met Kiff Leslie producer Allen apparently met Kiff in Disneyland as Kiff was Officer Calvin Blue, a character there, and Alan was disturbing well, the peace or something. I'd, and arrested I'd, known, I'd known Kiff five years already by this point. I met him in yeah. Chicago at Second City. Okay, yeah. you met him in Chicago at Second City, and then you were at Disneyland, and then as Officer Calvin Blue, Alan was disturbing the peace, and he was arrested by Officer Calvin Blue. That's right. Something like that. Get him on a prior. Yeah. Yeah. Like right. And, right. and this is why, and this is why I have this goofy picture because that was Goofy's response to my getting <laughs> arrested. Goofy's response. All right. Well, uh, this is a nice find because we talked this week, and you were outlining your career, Kiff, and it is very impressive, and it's a fun career where you're doing things that, if any of us had the ambition to go and do stuff, it would be, hey, I'd like to be a cartoon voice, or I'd like to be this, I like to do commercials. You've done a number of commercials. Yeah, and all kinds of voiceover work, not only on camera but off camera, and that and the Pirates of the Caribbean. You're a voice there. Yeah, and where do you want to begin with this rich career of yours? And I just want I to mean, inform everybody I, that if you're looking for a soundproofing idea, shirts, because that's <laughs> what Kiff has decided <laughs> is the best acoustic outlay for your uh, your voiceover work. I don't know that it's the best, but I will say it's the most expensive. Uh, because uh, each of these shirts is at least fifty dollars. You can do better with soundproofing, but for our purposes, when you live in uh, in Los Angeles in a tiny two bedroom apartment, you have to make space wherever you can, uh, and that's what my voiceover booth is, and that's where uh, that's where I'm joining you from today. I do a well, lot of uh, VO work, and you know, the uh, beauty of uh, the voiceover work is you can do it at home, whereas. And I don't know when the switch really happened. It was when the internet started to take hold. Yeah. But there was a time where you had to go to a studio and do all of that. And now you're at home, you're cranking it out, you're sending it to whomever. That's right. the deal. You know, I mean, it used to be cost prohibitive, right? Like if you had an ISDN box in your home, then Explain you could. Explain what that is. Explain what that ISDN is. ISDN is, it's essentially, um, it's a box that's about the size of a, uh, uh, a, a, an old computer uh, that connects using old school phone lines to basically use the phone lines as a microphone cable. So you could dial like the phone through your ISDN box to any studio in the world. And if they had an ISDN box as well, those two boxes would speak together and you would get this quality of audio uh, that we now have through the internet. And that was not the case. And it's why it took so long to get, you know, now there's stuff like IPDTL or IPDTL or Source Connect. Wow, um, uh, you, you got know. the whole catalog there. Yeah, it's it's yeah. good to stay. But, but up what on you're it. saying is the technology, and it's evident in how we do this every week, is down to just a few pieces of equipment. Whereas in the yes. old timey days, it was giant equipment and a lot of running around. Yes, a lot of space, a lot of connections, a lot of soundproofing needed to happen, and there were guys who had who had set up their home studios and they were dynamic home studios and they would just, you know, cause sometimes I remember Pete Stacker telling me back in Chicago, like it used to be, Who's you would Pete just, Stacker? he's a voiceover actor in Chicago, does a ton of commercials. And one of the, one of the principal guys, and he was, he talked about going to ARU, uh, the, re, the uh, recording studio uh, right down on Michigan Avenue and just going there at nine o'clock in the morning and just waiting. And then the facts would come in with scripts to read from clients in New York and Chicago and Los Angeles. And it was like, it was a small group of people who were doing VO and gradually over time, more and more people have gotten in through the advent of, of certainly this technology and home recording um, that now uh, so many people are involved in voiceover and there's just so many aspects to voiceover. That's kind of the thing. It's like, there's, you can, you can do, you know, while in Chicago, the work when I was there anyway, was predominantly commercial work, maybe 95% to 98% was commercial here in Los Angeles. The work is animation and video game and commercial and audiobook and promo and voice matching and show narration and IVR, which is like 
on hold messaging voices, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then, you know, just the work in the feature film industry. So, uh, that was ultimately what led us out here from the Midwest, but I got started in, in voiceover back in my, my first gig was in Toledo, Ohio. I was, I started doing on hold messaging for this company called business voice. And, um, and that was how I got started. And then well, chasing and I assume by the title on hold is you're on hold. And then you come on with, if Thank you, you for just calling. wait a, about four hours, we'll get right to you. Exactly. We're so thankful for your call. Someone's in the process of finding you. Press one if you want to leave a voicemail, and we'll get back to you when we feel like it. Uh, those kind of things. Yeah. And that's not a computer voice for the, or is it half and half? Or I, I've heard it's all automated stuff, all computer voices. The the company I worked for, Business Voice, did live recording um, and would would take those tapes like an answering machine and then link it to an interface that would play those pieces at different increments. Or if you pushed one, it would play someone else's thing or thank you for holding. So like it was, it's a combination of interactivity and playing audio assets, just like a video game, honestly, that when you're playing a video game, like let's say call of duty, if you throw a grenade, your character yells grenade. And then, you know, so that's been triggered the same way IVR works. Wow. Okay. So you grew up in Grand Rapids. Yes. And you had a dream to do this. Or what was yeah. your dream? And did it get twisted? Or this was always your dream? How do you uh, start in this business? My, my dream's always been very, very twisted, Gary. Um, I, I would say uh, when it started for me, I just fell in love with cartoons. It was Speed Racer. It was Yogi Bear. It was Bugs Bunny and Scooby-Doo. And I discovered that I was able to mimic them in the schoolyard and, and then around the house. And it was kind of all I thought about were these cartoons. And then as I got older, I started to discover that I could do impressions of Bill Murray, of Danny Aykroyd of Marty Short and like the comedians on Saturday Night Live were the guys I was really into. And then, um, you know, Jack Nicholson and all these different kind of impressions. And, um, you know, I would entertain myself and entertain my family with it and kind of come up with bits. Uh, but I didn't know what to do with it. You know what I mean? Like, it didn't seem like anything that you could make a living doing. There was Rich Little and there was like uh, John Biner, some of these guys who were impressionists, Frank Gorshin, who would be on like late night television and they would do bits and stuff like that. But that just, it, unless you were going to Vegas, it didn't make sense that you could find a way to get into it. Um, but the more movies I watched and the more I thought about what I wanted to do with my career, I knew that I wanted to be involved in somehow in film and television and animation and all things spoken. You know, my both my grandfathers are both of my grandfathers were ministers in the Christian Reformed Church. Two of my uncles were ministers. So as an extrovert, uh, they were like, you know. Um, you really should consider the pulpit. And I was like, yeah, I, I don't think that's where my, where my calling lies. I'm, I'm much more interested in <laughs> screaming grenade in my closet on a Friday afternoon for people. So what's the um, first call? How do you make that first call? What's your first step in all that? Oh, the first step is saying, I want to do it. And then right, getting, you did that. Get, and now getting now that what? and then doing plays in college. And then after doing plays, I, my, my, uh, I started doing improv in college as well. And then finding like-minded people who wanted to do it. And I still didn't have any clue how to do it. Even after leaving Grand Rapids, I went to work on a TV series called Christy for CBS. I worked a uh, crew on that. And it still felt like this elusive thing, even on set. Like, how do you find out how you get in front of the camera? How do you get, do you get an agent? Is that what you have to do? Turns out, yeah. When I, when I, so ultimately when I, when I moved to Detroit and I've been doing a little bit of VO work for business voice and then. Uh, some different things. And then Second City had a space there. When I got cast at Second City, one of the other actors I was working with was like, you should reach out to the talent agency. And I was like, is it that easy? Just call the talent agency? And they were like, yeah. So I went in the yellow pages and I called affiliated and they answered. And I was like, hi, I'm an actor. I'm looking for representation. And they were like, great. Do you have headshots and resume? I said, no, I'm working at the Second City and performing there. And they were like, well, why don't you come in and we'll meet you? And uh, I got a headshot. I, I found a photographer in Toledo who took my picture. And then I brought that picture in and typed up a resume of like the shows I did in college and met with my first agent, Christine Clausen. And she looked at my headshot. And she's like, your headshot's terrible. You got a, <laughs> you have a good look. Like, yeah, but cut off your head. Uh, cut <laughs> off your head. Well, the pitch, the picture, she's like, the picture is bad. The picture is not going to help you get work here. 
She's like, well, I'm, I'm, but I'm going to give you a recommendation. You should see Laura and Salter. She'll take your pictures and get you ready to go, but we'll take you and we'll start submitting you for things. And I was like, that's it. And they're like, that's it. Let's see what you got. So then they would call and say, Hey, you have an audition tomorrow at two o'clock up here in Troy. And I was living in Toledo at the time. So it's an hour and a half drive up to the audition. I walk into the room and there's copy and you learn the copy to the best of your ability and you perform it for the camera. And then you leave and you wait to see if you book the job or not. And that is the job. Like that job honestly has not changed from when I started it. Uh, the, the biggest change is the pandemic, which now I do those auditions in my closet or in the bedroom. And I set up a camera and shoot myself uh, with the camera um, and then send those off to the casting directors. But the process is exactly the same. And it's the same way. And it, like what I want to say to your audience is like, if you're interested in doing this or thought it was ever something that you wanted to do, you can. Like every major city has got a talent agent to do local commercials. It's how I got started. There was representation in Grand Rapids. There's there's reps in Detroit. There's I know that so many of my friends who got started working at Disney got started working at the parks, but then also doing like Chris Edgerly, who's now a voice on The Simpsons. Like he got started in he's the voice of Spider-Man on the Spider-Man ride at, uh, at Universal Islands of Adventure. Like you can. Everyone gets started. The best thing you can do is work where you are because there is work there. You just have to know where to look for it. And the best way to start looking for it is just in talent agencies. Do a search. Talent okay, agency, funny. my town. Kiff, it's funny. Uh, first of all, Kiff is short for what? That is not Christopher. your Christopher. Yeah, and my, there was somebody in the family who couldn't say Christopher. Yeah, it came out Kiff to Fur and it just stuck. I've been <laughs> just went to since Kiff. I was very little. That's right. You and I are parallel in the Yellow Pages reference there. Huh. And I know there are millennials that will look at you weirdly when you say Yellow Pages. What the hell is that? Anywho, when I wanted to get into broadcasting, I didn't know anybody. And I did that. I looked in the Yellow Pages for broadcasting schools and started going to one. And I thought it can't be this easy. It's, it's not easy, easy. But that was a step. And it started everything. You know, Yellow Pages. That's so great, Gary, because the, and I do feel like it, it is easy to, to take that step. But the reason I said I made the choice to do it too, like sometimes that's the biggest step. That's the biggest hurdle. Like when I'm teaching improv, one of the things that I, I tell my students is like the hardest thing to do is to step off the back line. The hardest thing to do is to step forward and raise your hand and say, I, I'd, I'd like to try it. I think I might be able to, to have that confidence and that belief in yourself to say, maybe I can do something different. Maybe I can change my life. Maybe I can try to go for a dream. And what's at the end of that decision? You know, I mean, I was a multimedia producer for many years prior to chasing all this work. And uh, I mean, I learned the skills of my trade before I knew that I was going to be doing this trade. I learned how to edit and I learned how to record and I learned how to, how to uh, contact people to set up shot, uh, shoots and stuff like that. Like all of those skills now that I learned in my 20s while I was working in sort of corporate America has helped me in my 30s, 40s, and 50s pursue this work and to be able to stay uh, well-educated on the tools that I need, especially given the pandemic, um, to uh, to being able to remain competitive. But that you, choice to ask for or to grab something new for yourself um, is one of the toughest things that people face. You played that character that we showed the photo of a few minutes ago, Officer Calvin Blue at Disneyland. Yeah. And there you are arresting Alan for loitering or something. <laughs> now, you did that character for a number of years at Disneyland. And I yeah. would imagine people that see these people like yourself doing these characters. Uh, I don't know if that's a, a, a job that looks to some people glamorous or tedious right. or whatever. How did you yeah. find that job? Uh, originally, for how many years? I did it for off and on for about seven years. Uh, I mean, I was a I was gridded for about a year, year and a half, and then and then my what schedule. That what is gridded? gridded? Means that you were scheduled every week, so you were an official employee. You had hours. You were working towards retirement, like all the things of being an employee as an actor for Disneyland. Um, but then I went to sub which uh, changed my status. So I didn't get to sign people in and that kind of stuff, but I was still able to pick up shifts here and there when they needed it. And largely that was just due to schedule. I mean, so many of the actors and performers that you meet at all of the parks are just 
some of the most fantastic performers you can possibly imagine. Extraordinary skill, extraordinary singers and musicians and actors. And this is, and it's a hard, hard road. And the beautiful thing about Disneyland, about the, the parks, about Universal, is that these places recognize that the actors, many of the actors that are there, are there for a temporary period. And it's like, look, we're, this is symbiotic. I'm here to bring my skill set to bring life and energy to Buena Vista Street. You guys are paying me and keeping me alive and giving me the flexibility and freedom to be able to ch pursue what I came here to do, to be able to chase animation and film and television projects. So, um, and, and that's that's a, a big uh, part of the folks who make up the the streetmosphere and the puppeteers and all that other kind of stuff. Um, it, you know, is you, there a you, posting to be a character? How did you find out? Or you just go because you hear they're always hiring? Disney where, auditions. Where does that start? Disneyauditions.com. Disneyauditions.com. If you're interested in performing anywhere in the world, if you have someone in your family who is like, man, my nephew uh, is a dancer and wants to, but has no idea how to go, Disneyauditions.com. Um, you can search based on region. You can search based on um, occupation, what they're looking for. And that was how I found it. I was, they were advertising for someone to play the genie in the Aladdin stage show that was running at the Hyperion theater at the, right at the end of, uh, of Hollywood Boulevard and, and California adventure. And that, that role was like the most coveted role in the park. You're working in air conditioned on the theater. You're playing Robin Williams. Essentially you're playing the genie. So like, you know, um, uh, I went in with the intention of voice matching Robin and trying to bring all the sort of, you know, uh, that kind of energy to the character. And they were like, that's not what we want. We want you to make that character your own. So I did that audition. And while I was there, they were also auditioning for Streetmosphere for Buena Vista Street. So, um, so I also did that audition. And uh, while I did, I got called back for the genie and Iago, the, the parrot puppet. Um, I also got called back and ultimately cast for, um, for Citizens of Buena Vista Street as Calvin the Cop. And then also working for like Disney events inside. There's so many other things for like corporate training and that kind of thing that uh, that they use actors and performance um, as part of the uh, as part of the uh, the corporate community. It's a and, marvelous company. And as Officer Calvin Blue, you would carry a a, a tube a whistle. that a whistle and a tube that said mace, but it was really silly string. Is that? Yeah. Uh, something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. No, I yeah. had a, I had a, I had a book of fake tickets. So if you <laughs> see Calvin blue out and you're on Buena Vista street or whatever, and you see him with thicket with tickets, yeah. you can ask for a ticket and they'll, they'll write you a ticket. Hey, um, over here. So Come here. Fun. All right. You see what you were doing there? Yep. You're hassling goofy and that's yep. going to cost you. Here you go. Now, all the tickets, I will say all the tickets are very, very positive. So they're all about like you're spreading cheer. So good job. They're all like positive citation. Uh, tickets. This is very Disney. Uh, it's it's very Disney. You're, you're hard pressed to find a to find something that is like, uh, you know, you were you were you were uh, stalking uh, Chippendale. So you have an ongoing part with this young rock show on NBC. Yeah. Yes. And what character are you playing on this? I play uh, wrestling legend Pat Patterson. He was the uh, he passed in December of 2020, but he was a professional wrestler in the fifties and sixties and seventies transitioned into commentary for the WWF, which turned into the WWE became a close personal confidant and vice president of operations, uh, for Vince McMahon and for WWE and, uh, Dwayne, the rock Johnson, uh, credits Pat as being the guy who discovered him and gave him his break in the WWF. And, um, that's, uh, I, so I play that role and, and Pat's part of, part of Dwayne's story in, uh, in, in lots of different ways as he is in many, uh, for, for many wrestlers. And, um, uh, our first episode was this past Tuesday of season two, uh, season one of the, of young rock is already on us on Hulu and Peacock and things like that. Um, but where it's running on NBC and on, on Tuesday nights at eight o'clock, uh, Eastern, uh, seven central. Uh -huh. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's, it's That's a terrific cool. show. Great family, um, hilarious. And, uh, and fascinating. I mean, to really dive into Dwayne's life. And when he was a little boy, he grew up around Andre the Giant and Macho Man and, and the Iron Sheik. And as he got older, uh, he just moved through the wrestling community with his father and then ultimately made the transition himself. And speaking, going back to Disney, 
the Pirates of the Caribbean voice that you do about four or five years ago. Yeah. They had to get more politically correct with the Pirates of the Caribbean. And that yeah. meant getting rid of whatever that little theater they were doing. Yeah, it was a slave going, auction. They were auctioning slave auction. off female slaves. Yes. And they changed it. So, so right. Now so we're now what, what's the new line that you are now part of in that event? Well, now I say, way anchor now, you swabbies. What be I offered for these hearty hens? Each one an egg layer. Stone fruited and corn fed they be. So we're we're uh, auctioning off uh, uh, chickens, yeah, yes. hens. Okay, and uh, and they want the rum. The guys on the uh, the pirates on the other side of the river want rum, and um, and my auctioneer pirate will never be able to to move these hens. I think unless they soak the eggs in rum, then maybe perhaps that'll be a, a great thing to have. That's always going to be there, and if you go on the ride, there you are. There's your voice yeah. coming out, huh? Let's yeah. let's play the clip. Right. Here's, oh, yes. the, here's the clip. Way anchor now, you swabbies. What be I offer for these hearty heads? Everyone an egg layer. There it is. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> and Running on an endless loop. It's awesome. Daddy, what do you do? Well, I'm a pirate. I'm a, <laughs> a, a popper, a poet, a, all of that. And you are on your resume. A uh, lot to cover here. And... You also do voices of actors who have done a movie and then they have to redo their audio for whatever reason yeah. and they're not available and they yeah. know you handle a number of voices. Give us some of the background of that. Um, I, uh, like I started, one of the things that I wanted to do when I got here was to pursue voice matching and I didn't really know how to do that. My agents started submitting me for things and uh, I started booking. Um, do my first job that I booked was as Sylvester Stallone doing his exertions in the movie bullet to the head. And what exertions are, are his fights, uh, like getting punched, getting hit, getting thrown. So, uh, while I can talk like Stallone, let me turn my volume down just a touch. And also, this is what it sounds like when he's like, ah! 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 so, uh, so that's like Stallone's exertions. And, <laughs> okay, um, Kiff, we need you to come in and do some Stallone exertions. What time can you get here or do it from your closet with the shirts? Yeah, Got it's it. way better. To, it's way better to do it at the studio. <laughs> yeah. Exertions. That's a thing. It's a thing. It's a very important thing in voice ma in voices in particular in video games and in and in feature film and in animation. I mean, some of the sessions I'm doing, I'm currently on uh, the Crude's Family Tree, which is on uh, Hulu and Peacock, and I play Grug, the Nicolas Cage character from the Crude's. Our series is, um, you know, the continuing adventures of these uh, of these of this family. And uh, so being able to not only uh, talk like Nicolas Cage, uh, but also act as Grug, and then he exerts himself throughout where he's throwing boulders and punch and pound the ground and run or run, stop, whoa, what's that? Barracuda, no! So like there's, you, you have to create the action uh, vocally so that the animators have something to make come to life. Right. So, so the begins with the voice and then they animate to what we do with VO. So wow. if the script says swing from a vine, it's, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to make you play it out in your mind and then act it so that they can animate it. Uh, wow. A year or so I, I, later, you see it. It's crazy. I didn't think that was a subset of, I knew they had to do dialogue sometimes that got lost yeah. when they were filming, but I didn't know an exertion guy was a, oh, yeah. a thing. It's huge. You're and an exertion like, guy. Uh, one of the things, yeah, exertions are really, like in the movie Call of the Wild, I, I played Harrison Ford, and a lot of what I did for that was uh, scratch. Now, what scratch is, is when they're in the process of making the movie, they might not have all the footage shot or they may be changing the script after they've shot stuff. So they want to change some lines or shorten it and maybe they can cut it and maybe they can't. So then they bring in someone who can talk like Harrison and redo the line <laughs> and then we do the line differently. And, and then I also did exertions. So he didn't have <laughs> to do that when he came in later where he was, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's running and hurrying. What a great country. Stuff. That's a job. 
That's a job. You get paid for doing exertions. Actually, yeah. I don't know if people know, Kiff did Meg Ryan's exertions in When Harry Met Sally. That's that's Kiff. All yeah, right. it is. Yeah, I'm uh, very proud of that Rich, you, I have on my card when I taught Richie Rich, you are yes. involved in that. I play the dad on the uh, Netflix series Richie Rich, uh, which uh, you're, if <laughs> those of you with children uh, between 6 and 11 may have caught our show. Uh, parents hate us, but kids love it. Uh, it's madcap insanity. I play everything in that show as the dad. I play um, Cliff Rich is a complete idiot and uh, a happy idiot, but a complete idiot. And we dress up and there's raptors and time travel and jetpacks and unfrozen cavemen. It's absolute madness. I'm, I sing and dance as a chicken nugget. Like, I mean, it's it's hard to really help you see it without watching the show and then going. My dad was like. My dad watched about five minutes. It was like, okay, yeah, I'm yeah, glad okay, you're on thanks, this, but yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Roll. Now do an exertion and go get me some coffee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do 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 Tom Hanks. I'd <laughs> rather watch you do Tom Hanks than watch you do this uh, stupid father on television. Okay, and finally Emma Stone. You hand her the good people, Emma Stone. Oh my gosh, Emma. I, I have to say, I've been really, really fortunate with the celebrities that I've worked with and around. That. Uh, from everyone from Denzel Washington to Emma Stone to Alfre Woodard to uh, Dan Aykroyd and Matt Damon and Al Pacino and now on the on the rock both Dwayne Johnson all the way to Uli and Mana and Stacy and the entire cast of Young Rock. I mean, I've just been completely blessed. Amy Poehler, they're all such giving, kind, thoughtful people. And being on set among these show people is one of the greatest joys of my life. It's exactly what, what I hoped as a child to be able to experience. And it's not to say that it's not a hard road and there's a tons of ups and downs, but it, it is a, it's, it's a blast. And, um, and, uh, and I How love many being takes here. did you do for that one, Kip? For the Emma Stone one yeah. or for La La Land? Yeah. We uh, probably Kip, did. Kip, hand her the coffee this way. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, with the way the camera was moving in that shot, following her into that into the coffee shop behind her, the last thing they were concerned about was how well I handed her the mm -hmm. cup. I think, and then they follow her back out. It's right. a perfect shot. And uh, um, but that said, I mean, <sighs> Damien Chazelle, our director, is was real precise and wanted. You know, he's he's a real craftsman. So. We made certain to get my mark correct and all that other stuff. I would say we probably did that scene four or five times to get that shot. But Kiff, then no exerting. You're exerting. This is that's not it. exertion. That's Man. it. Just smile and hand. Smile. There it is. It's on us. It's all on right. Us. Kiff Vanden Hoovel. I got it right, Alan. Nailed I it. Think, yes, I did. And I exerted <laughs> too when I said it. Kiff, continued success. It was, it was fun you, talking Kiff. to you. My pleasure. Thank you so much all for right. having me today. There you go. There's there's life in America. You can make a living doing that. And it starts with the yellow pages. Don't I know it? How about that, Leslie? You know, nothing makes me happier than when, than when I learn something new. And oh my God, exertions is now <laughs> a <laughs> thing. <laughs> and I'm going to be watching every movie and you know, that's probably yeah. not Harrison that's, Ford going, Ugh. That's probably <laughs> Kiff doing some exerting. Over so with that, um, we've got a giveaway coming up, and and let's make it hashtag exertions. Yeah. Okay, there we are. Uh, that is so much fun, I, and to have to exert in a certain person's voice. So I'm thinking with Emma mm. Stone, I could be uh, her exertions, be. like oh, uh, oh. ooh, oh, free uh, coffee, oh, <laughs> free coffee, oh. That ooh. and he had me thinking back. You've done commercial work. Um, yes. Well, in for fact, heavens to Betsy. You're going to hear one in a few minutes here with yeah, Bettenhausen. Do one soon. I've but, been doing their um, commercials for years, and I, I I just get a kick out of it. Uh, it, it, it's a, it supports the show. It's a sponsor and all that. But uh, that is that is great work if you can get it, as Kiff has told us. Uh, which is why I had a flashback to one that I did early on in my career. And to this day, I I like shudder, but I can't forget Leather and Lacquer starring this week at Harlem Furniture. So yeah, there 
Leather and Lacquer. Exactly. That was a morning show, too, that we worked under. You know. <laughs> it was. It, yes, it and was. And that was probably more popular than the furniture I was hawking at that point. <laughs> All right. Yeah, well. Speaking of Bettenhausen, let's do that, Alan. And we're going to talk to Ryan, have his Wisconsin report, and then Leslie's got stuff, and then we'll give away all the things we mentioned at the end of the show. But first, Bettenhausen Automotive. Get out of the office and into adventure during the Jeep Celebration event. Going on now at Bettenhausen Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram on 159th Street in Tinley Park. Right now, Bettenhausen has the all-new Jeep Grand Cherokee L in stock. Lease a new 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee L Laredo for only $4.19 per month. Your best Jeep buying experience starts now at BettenhausenCDJR.com. And there it is now. If you need a mortgage or a refi or anything associated with that, here's the guy, David Hochberg. He's the man and his team. They know all about this stuff, how to save you money. Does that sound good? Well, I think it does. And those are the numbers on the screen to call for the free consultation. Free consultation. How many people are giving you anything for free anymore? Anything that you can think of? Very few. Yeah. Yeah. You call to have somebody check on something that you might want to get fixed. Well, that's $150 to show up. And you don't get that back unless they do the work. They do that thing. If you hire us, we'll take that out of the, the final total. Yeah. Not David. Yeah, not David. It's free. And then hopefully you'll do business when you hear what he can do for you. David Hochberg, he is the guy. All right. By the way, folks, it's exertions with an S. Otherwise, you won't be in on the drawing. So if you have... Put in uh, I think I think we put it I think we put it with a T because <laughs> I copied what was in the chat and didn't look it up. <laughs> so no, at the accepting? end it's exertions plural. Oh, plural. Gotcha, 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 yeah. gotcha. So we've got it it's, right on the screen. Correct, correct. There it is. There it is. One more there time. There you go. All right, okay. there it is. All right, let's bring Ryan on. See what's been going on in the dairy state. Ryan, hey hello. there, everybody's. Hey, uh, Speaking of Wisconsin, before you say anything, I know, Leslie, you got some Kringle from Tracy from Racine. I, I got you, some Tracy. raspberry Kringle, and I guess it's for St. Patrick's Day or whatever, but or it's spring. I don't care. I love the Kringle. Well, that, that's almost like is... Entenmann's uh, product. It's like crack. I mean, it's, it's good no matter what the season that's, is. That's right. What flavor did and you get, Leslie? It... Well, uh, mine was a raspberry too. And part of this comes from a conversation we've had, uh, a running conversation Tracy and I have had regarding um, the five sizes of Schnauzer. And she's very concerned because um, we, of course, recognize teacup toy, miniature, uh, standard, and giant. And in fact, there are problems concerning the teacup and toy that there's some bad breeding going on with those. So, well, on this show, we recognize them. Please don't go out and try to get yourself a teacup or a toy schnauzer. They are not good. We recommend giant schnauzers. They're the, they're the most fun. Uh, one just won the AKC award this year. So uh, yeah. with that, uh, thank you, Tracy. And we learned something else new this week about and, schnauzers. And, and schnauzers are the core of this program. But all Dutch wives are welcome. Oh, we have no problem with any Dutch wife or a Dutch husband. Dutch husband. Somebody sent me a picture of this woman straddling this six foot long pillow, and I guess that's her Dutch husband. All are welcome. Yes, that's what we're mm -hmm. saying. And and everybody up here is uh, at least some people are reeling from the Marquette loss. You know, March Madness going on. So you know they they got okay. they got beat pretty bad by UNC. So that's been the the talk of uh, the the area. But Wisconsin plays. Uh, in Milwaukee, so we maybe was, have another chance. Speaking of that, I was listening to this radio show. <laughs> this guy, he, he comes on. Um, I, I don't fill out NCAA brackets anymore because, okay, about five, six years ago, I won $300. But I'll tell you what, I don't have the time to fill out these brackets, and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> My time is precious, so I'm not filling out these brackets anymore. And I'm Listening to this, and it's that same feeling that John Belushi had when Stephen Bishop was playing the guitar, and John Belushi's looking, what the fuck is this? And then takes the guitar and smashes it. I'm like, listening to this going, what are you talking about? Then don't, why are you sharing this? 
I don't have well, time. How else are you going to fill 12 hours of sports talk about shit that you really <laughs> have never participated in and you kind of don't know that much about? Okay. But God this love guy, you sportscasters, but... Leslie, I, his I time is precious. Apparently not writing interesting radio patterns. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There you go. Jesus. Uh, really? I'm th- come on. Oh, and I. It's a hard yeah. March madness is madness. It's, it's madness, I tell you. So I went to lunch at the uh, local uh, establishment called Sobelman's. If, Alan, if you want to put it up on the screen, this is what they were they were offering uh, for a What's Bloody that? Mary. So there were people drinking. Look at that. It's got chicken oh, legs. Oh. It's it's waffles. It's got Are those waffles? Waffles. <laughs> Look at that, the brunch beast. So they they said, would you like one of those? I said, no, I got to go back to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really? Where do you begin with that thing? I don't know. You'd be in a coma by the time right, you were gonna, done. It takes a half hour to disassemble it and get it into <laughs> eating and drinking order. I don't have and probably, I don't have time for that. Uh, I no. really don't, Ryan. I've got a... a, a geez. Okay. Is obesity still an issue here in the U.S. of A? Because that's no. how you get it. No, right we're there. all skinny, skinny again. It's all right. good. Yeah. Right. So what do you got, Ryan? I got a, a report on a couple interesting uh, uh, up at the uh, Wisconsin Dells. Uh, you know, that's the theme park capital of the world. So there's there's another interesting ride that they've opened. All right. Let's roll it, Alan. It's Wisconsin, yeah, hey. Hey, everyone. I hope you had a great St. Patrick's Day filled with lots of green beer and lots of gold that you found at the end of the rainbow. Now that the pandemic is slowly disappearing, we're looking ahead for summer. So in Milwaukee, there's tons of festivals that go on all year long, along with Summerfest, which has a lot of big act headliners. Well, if you wanna do something different, Red Bull is coming to Milwaukee in Veterans Park, looking over Lake Michigan for the first annual flute toss. It is basically you create flying machines. So there'll be a each team, which includes five pilots, you'll get your create your flying machine, you'll climb up on a 27-foot platform, and then you'll jump off into Lake Michigan. Um, I think it's judged around, you know, flight distance, how it flies, probably there's a creative element to it. So if you're looking for something to do this summer, it's July 16th at Veterans Park in Milwaukee. I guess you should say, Orville and Wilbur, eat your hearts out, you know. A hundred years later, we're trying to reinvent kind of what you did. Switching gears a little bit, if you're looking for water parks, you know, many of you know the Wisconsin Dell is the water park capital of the world, or at least that's their tagline. Well, they're adding more attractions now that they think people will be attending the, the resorts and the area in the summer. They've added a new rotating water slide. The description is, says it's kind of like a Ferris wheel combined with a water slide. That'll be an interesting one to ride. Uh, Maybe a little motion sickness as you go down the slide. They're also adding a five acre free float area you can float around. Sort of like a lazy river, but there's no current. You just kind of free float around like on a lake. So that's a few attractions at the Dells and there were some more in the article. So those are two things. If you're looking for something to do this summer, head on up to Wisconsin. Have a great weekend and we'll talk next week. Was that an okay. actual picture of that Ferris wheel? No, that was a little creative, Alan. Yeah, because I'm trying to figure out how Alan that works. added to that to what I had. But that's the lowest effort amusement park ride ever. <laughs> Here's a, 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 a an inner tube, and that's a pond. And yeah. see, it's a yeah. it's a floating experience. Right, just get on the tube and see you later. See you in about three hours. Five acres. Five in acres. Lazy, just floating lazy around SOBs. In, in, the, um, in the midday sun. By the way, I have attended a flugtag competition in the past. Yes, and it is damn fun. It is crazy, <laughs> stupid fun, and it's amazing people don't get killed. Thank God they have folks on, like, um, sea dews or whatever <laughs> to pick them out of the water when they end up trying to put a 20-pound thing with very teeny wings uh, to flight, uh, and it doesn't work. And so there's a lot of debris, there's sinkage, and there are a couple of people who actually do create uh, some Orville and wow. Wilbur kind okay. of moments. I've never there. heard of it. Walter That's... says, he who doesn't die wins. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> but I've seen the the video of that event, and it 
does look like when you see a Wright Brothers documentary, they show the people that oh. have decided they're going to fly before the Wright Brothers. And it does look like a lot of that stuff that they put together and it just collapses about <laughs> three feet into the flight. Hot, well, and some of them feathers. collapse right there on the, on yeah. the ramp where they've got like 20 different wings. Yeah, like the, exactly. It's It looks like those things from the 1910s that they would Yeah. Show. All right. Oh, good job, Ryan. Talk to you Have next a, week. Yep. Take care. All right. Leslie, what do you got? Um, something we started talking about this morning, a Minnesota woman is facing charges after going on a rampage at a Target store with a golf club. Police were called to the West St. Paul store Tuesday morning for a report of a woman trashing the place. When officers arrived, store management was in the process of evacuating everyone except the suspect, who was still in the process of using that golf club to wreak havoc on the electronics department. The uh, woman was taken into custody, charged with criminal damage to property and disorderly conduct. The store remained closed for several hours for cleanups in aisle one, two, three. <laughs> Get it in the hole! Get it in the hole. <laughs> she made a few holes. I'll bet she did. Um, so this sounded like it was going to be a really cool story until I started looking into it more. A North Dakota pastor is still trying to figure out who's responsible for leaving a giant Kmart K in the middle of his front lawn last week. Well, now it turns out that all signs point to it being a prank carried out by some of the pastor. Uh, this is Paul Knight's fellow staffers at the Hope Evangelical Covenant Church in Grand Forks and not some sort of veiled threat. Pastor Knight is now looking for someone to take the massive K off his hands. He says his wife hopes that it's gone by June. What is the point of the prank even? What, what's that all about? And that's what I'm thinking. It still says Kmart. His name is Knight. So maybe is that the uh, wow. tie-in? But uh, I love pastor humor. I love religious humor. It's the best. Where would you get a big K? I, uh, where do you even get Kmart that to going do out of business sale? But why are we finding out about this half a continent away? <laughs> oh, uh, these but, pranksters. There's a big uh, K in the front yard. Wow, uh, that's uh, funny. Uh, 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 <laughs> Speaking of funny um, and creepy, a teenager in India is lucky to be alive after falling out of bed and landing on a sickle, a sickle that ended up embedded in his head. Apparently, 16-year-old Bupu Sen was tired after a day spent reaping and went to sleep with his sickle propped up next to his bed. During the night, he rolled out of said bed and onto the sharp blade, which sliced right into his skull. There are photos to prove it, and you should check them out online. It took three hours for doctors to safely remove the blade, but Bupu is expected to make a full recovery. India, crazy town. Just going to leave the sickle right next to the bed. No problem. <laughs> uh, this is like that Geico commercial with the teenagers. We should run away. No, let's go into the garage with the 47 uh, hanging chainsaws. chainsaws. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's think of a good place to put my sickle. Hmm. How about right here hmm, next right to the next bed? Right next to the bed where I can find it. Okay, Boo Poo, good one. I also am a rough sleeper, so this is going to be yeah. great. Um, and finally, a dentist in Wisconsin has been found guilty of breaking his patient's teeth in order to collect millions of dollars for costly repairs. Prosecutors say that back in 2015, Scott Charmoli began deliberately damaging patients' teeth. That year, the number of crowns he installed more than doubled, increasing his income exponentially. Then over the next four years, Dr. Charmoli billed insurers and patients over $4.2 million dollars for crown procedures alone and mostly for work that he was the cause of last week a jury found charmoli guilty of five counts of health care fraud punishable by up to 10 years per count on top of that almost 100 former patients are now suing him for damage this asshole woke up every morning when he was doing this and decided i'm going to break some teeth and collect on fixing them I could do cleanings, yeah. I could do fillings, but thank, no. thank God he wasn't a proctologist. <laughs> <laughs> Asshole's broken. I'm gonna have to fix it. What? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it I, well, I broke fine. it when I went in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How did well, how'd you break it? Well, <laughs> uh, ancient Chinese secret. All right, is that so, it? Uh, I think.
think that should All be right. Why don't you race into the uh, Leslie Kyling Bago fun meter no, stuff? Wait, I, got a, I, got, I, got, I got a giant K I can share. When you said it, I, I went hunting for it. That's why I accidentally hit the wrong button. It's at the Kafka Museum in Prague. <laughs> okay. Oh. I was that's, like, that's where that's where you could get a spare K, I guess. Oh, great! If I'm ever gonna do a prank on a pastor, <laughs> right, let's go prank the pastor. All right, we do okay. the wine condom and whatever she pulls so out of that bag. So here's the wine condom and first, and then Ellen's <gasps> giveaway. What Sesame is that? Sesame Street band aids. No. Yeah. Nice. Nice. We have, nice. So we didn't see your band aids at the beginning. I just of have the show. two. Because I'm traveling, I didn't have enough room to pack the other two. Uh, so. so so, you too, like Gary, can get yes. some Band-Aids and they're, wear them as a fashion They're just fun. Statement. It just makes you feel better. Yeah. Especially uh, when there's no cut beneath them. That's right. And here we go. Alan's going to hit that button. And a random listener here will win. Julie Kennedy. All right. All right. You so Julie, will... send uh, send Gary a message on Facebook or text or email. Text 773-888-2157. Email Gary Meyer Show at GaryMeyer.com and we'll uh, with your address. You up with and the I'll get that to Leslie and she'll send you a nice handwritten note with those prizes. I will. I will use my best penmanship. You know, I used to think as a child that penmanship would have a lot more influence on my life, um, as well as my scissor skills, which are also very, very precise. Um, what was the other thing I thought as a child would Scissor more? skills. Oh, yeah. I can color within the lines. I, I would do oh, the outline. All right. But um, the other thing I thought would we'd see a lot more of when I was a little kid was fainting. Didn't you think women would be fainting left and right all the time? But anyway. Well, according to Kiff, that, that could be a subset of something. You could mimic <laughs> fainting a, yeah, on the, on the screen. An exertion. Yes, an exertion. <gasps> all right, uh, Ellen, what do people have to do with what you told them to do? All right, let me turn my camera back on here. That's this button over here. So for the uh, bottle opener and for the magnet, we ask people to go to this website, which is a Google form. It's bit.ly slash GM31822. It's today's date. It's bit.ly slash GM31822. That's how easy I tried to make it. Didn't make it so easy in the original voiceover at the beginning of the show, but it was 3 a.m. when I recorded that. At any rate, when you go there, you'll get to the form. The form's got a bunch of questions. There are a few required ones, like your email and your, um, Blood your name. Blood type. Uh, hey, Who is our guest rules. today? We shared that earlier. Then there's some optional ones. And then the very last question, <laughs> the very last question, we told you to select this answer for your final question. This answer is the letter B. Because B uh -huh. is always right, I learned in law school. Okay. Well, actually, when I studied for the bar <laughs> exam, we were told if we didn't know the answer to a question on the bar exam, the answer was B. So there you go. The answer is, of course, B. All right. There you have it. That's awesome. And so we'll, we'll do a drawing next Friday on the show of, of people that. who've, completed, who've completed this correctly, right? So you got to answer that B. You got to identify our guest. If you've been watching the show, you know the answers. Let's, let's give away some stuff because I got a lot more stuff and we wanted to reach out to people who only listen in on the audio cast and who watch replays and don't watch with us live. Okay. Well, and and as you next, point out... Oh, I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, speaking of next Friday, Bill Leff and Greg Potter return and are going to feature their collectibles, the stuff that they really want to highlight on the visit. And that should be quite interesting because these guys are very into it. Yeah, I've been in touch with both of them so far. They're very much into it. We're yeah. going to see some All interesting right, stuff from those guys. Show. Let me turn my camera off. All right, Where Leslie. That? That's this button And we will here. not be selling any of your information. We will not be handing it off to third parties. So don't worry. Anything nope. we're using, that you... We're using the email address only to contact the winner, and that's it. There you All go. All right. Promise. That's it. That's it. Thank you for listening. Let's give out that cannoli coming down the aisle. It's, it's beautiful. Take the cannoli. Yes, look how beautiful. It's probably going to be in a drink in Wisconsin, <laughs> <laughs> according to what Ryan told us. All right. And the schnauzer, what should we do with that schnauzer this weekend? Only because it's fun to say, and it's a test to see if I've had too much to drink. I would take my schnauzer fluke toggin. 
Do it. Flug tag your schnauzer over the weekend. It is three in the green. Talk to you Monday. Gear is down. Flaps are down. The voice of the globe, the cocktail hour has ended. Go in peace. If you like that, I got other stuff I think you're going to like. This is the Gear Force 